make our intermission. And I have a feeling that we will stop the party and let it go on forever, but we are in fact here to listen to music, listen to stories, and acting. And as you can see, the uh, famous Cape concert tones are in front of us again. And I have a feeling they want to sing. What do you think, folks? Yeah, I think a lot of But before we start singing a, an announcement, uh, for all of you gentlemen in the audience, I can pretty much guarantee you that being up here singing is more fun than being in the audience watching. <laughs> and one of the things we do annually, in fact more than once a year, is have a guest night. We get together and rehearse as a group every Monday night at the Unitarian Universalist Church on 6A in Barnesville. And this Monday night, we're inviting all of you to come and join us, and we'll have a party. So, this Monday night, 7.30, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, come to the church, it's right where uh, 6A meets Finney's Lane, where the, there's a light and you can't miss it. Um, come to the church and, and join us in our rehearsal. See what we're all about. Uh, this is for the gentlemen. Ladies, although you're welcome to come and watch, uh, singing is not something that the women do with the men. There is, in fact, however, a very fine women's barbershop group that rehearses Tuesday nights in Hyannis. Uh, but for the gentlemen, please join us this Monday night for our first song of the second half. Uh, we're going to sing a song that may sound familiar to you, even if you've never heard it before. <laughs> what I said was this song may sound familiar to you, even if you never heard it before. And the reason is, uh, how many of you have heard the song Danny Boy? Okay. Danny Boy um, and this next song were both based on an Irish folk song called The London Dairy Air, which is not the same as London Dairy Air, which... <laughs>
After that magnificent thing, we go to a Beatles tune, which is also a pretty little thing. Uh, actually, this song was written a long time when the Beatles were first starting out. Actually, Paul, or yeah, Paul McCartney was 16 years old when he wrote it. But they didn't release it until the Sgt. Pepper album. And um, the pe many people think that the, the age that was chosen for the song was because Paul's father was 64 years old when Paul wrote the song. Uh, John Lennon is also given credit, and he said he had nothing to do with the song, and he hates it. <laughs> he said the only kind of he made was that he did give the name for the grandchildren who were named in the song. But other than that, he wants no claim to claim. Uh, when I'm 64,
self appointed Kitty House cat is called Kit Kat. He's appeared several months ago unannounced and took up residence here. However, however lately, he's been missing. So much the consternation of the staff. We have heard rumors that the missing cat has been seen in the vicinity pursuing a romantic affair. <laughs> then suddenly his girlfriend, Miss Kitty, has moved in. Perhaps if we all call Kit Kat's girlfriend, will come to join the fun. Can somebody say, here, Kitty? <laughs>
well. I think that's what really the night's about. The next quartet is feeling good. They perform all over the game. They're going to be performing the first night this year. And um, they've won quite a few competitions. And uh, their famous song we're going to open with, uh, or one of their famous renditions of their songs, Freddie Feel Good and his funky little four-piece band. Ladies and gentlemen, feeling good. It's 
entire country was engaged in a murderous civil war. The most unfortunate conflict in our nation's history, with its stupendous personal cost, deserves to be remembered. Over 600,000 American sons were annihilated in the worst destruction in our history. When you're next in Chatham, take time to visit the monument to the men and boys of Cape Cod's and Massachusetts volunteer industry who died in the battle of the wilderness. We dedicate this song to the memory of all Americans who have made the superior sacrifice.
as we promised earlier, we had a raffle, and it's time for us to pick our raffle winner. So we're looking for Ms. Jo Maylaw-Weiber, because she is going to choose the ticket, and she has promised that she will not choose her own ticket. No.
favorite soprano in all the world, Joan Kirchner. So we can't hear what you mean just with applause. Let's have some music. And since the fabulous Sir Jones are in front of us, well, let's finish up with them. Oh